Hi Bobcats, in this video we're going to take a brief look at the metric system. Measurement is one of the key uh, pieces to doing an experiment and so it's really important as we make these measurements that we put the appropriate units on them um, and so one of the things we'll talk about is what unit goes with the various quantities that we might be measuring and then we'll also take a look at the metric system and how you use prefixes in the metric system um, to scale the unit to the size that's necessary. As we do experiments and make measurements, um, it's important that we record not just the number that we measure, but also the unit that goes with it. For a class like 1310, we actually need to reverse engineer that process sometimes. For instance, they might tell us that the sample was one kilogram, and we need to take that number one kilogram and plug it into an equation and recognize that kilogram goes with the concept of mass. So we're looking for the mass term in the equation. So it's important when we're looking at a table like this to recognize the quantity that we're measuring like mass and the unit that goes with that quantity. It's standard in science to use the metric system for measurements. And so with that metric system, um, we will use these numerical prefixes that stand for powers of 10. For instance, kilo, as in kilogram, goes with the size of 1,000, which is also called 10 to the third. If you need conversions like this on a quiz or a test, I will provide this chart. Um, you don't need to memorize these, but you do need to be familiar with them, and it helps a lot if you know which ones are big units like mega and giga, and which ones are tiny units like nano and micro. Um, so the, the prefixes that we put on that indicate we have less than a single base unit, so we have just a fraction of a base unit, are the ones that have the negative exponents. So for instance, milli is one one thousandth or 10 to the minus 3, or micro is one millionth or 10 to the minus 6. For this class, most of what we need to do with the metric prefixes just involves um, going between a base unit and a prefix unit. So I might ask you to go between uh, meters and kilometers. I'm probably not gonna ask you to go between millimeters and kilometers, or from one unit with a prefix to a different unit with a prefix. So if, if one of the things that's involved always is a base unit, we just need to know the size of the, the prefix for the pre unit that has a prefix with it. Um, so for instance, on this first example where it says one millimeter is equal to blank meters, well, if you go and you look at that chart that we're looking at on the previous page, milli is associated with the size of 10 to the minus three. So a really easy way to write this is in place of that m, which stands for milli, we put times 10 to the minus three. So this becomes one, and then in place of the milli, we'll put times 10 to the minus three meters. If we look at the next one on that uh, chart, giga was a billion or 10 to the nine. So this becomes one, keeping that same number out in front, and then times 10 to the ninth, bytes, right? One gigabyte is one times 10 to the ninth bytes. For converting kilograms to grams, uh, the size that goes with kilo is a thousand or 10 to the third. So 25 kilograms become 25 times 10 to the third grams. Now this is not strictly speaking, written correctly in terms of scientific notation. In scientific notation, the 25 should be written as a 2.5. As far as your calculator goes, if you're doing calculations on these numbers, your calculator understands 25 times 10 to the third. So if all you're doing is plugging it into your calculator, what I just did is awesome. If you need to give an answer in correct scientific notation, well, we got to break this down a little bit farther. We didn't, um, that, that 
coefficient out in front of the power of 10 needs to be a number between 1 and 10. Um, and so we need to move the decimal one more time. Um, and so I think the, the easiest way to think about this to formalize it, uh, 25 is the same thing as 2.5 times 10 to the first because we moved the decimal one place and it's a number bigger than one, and then we still have that times 10 to the third out at the end. Well, when we multiply um, numbers that have the same base but different exponents, we just simply add the exponents. So this simplifies down to two and a half times 10 to the fourth grams. And last but not least, we have 5,000 meters is equal to blank kilometers. Well, this one we got to go the opposite direction on. We have the base unit and we're looking for a prefix unit. Kilo means 10 to the third or 1,000. And so we have 5,000 or 5 times 10 to the third meters. So this is just the same thing as 5 kilometers. As we move through the semester, there are certain um, equivalents between units that are common in chemistry, and I listed them here on this page. Um, one of the things that will pop up even in the first chapter is the equivalence between milliliters and cubic centimeters. One milliliter is one cubic centimeter. It's two different names for the same unit. Another one that we'll have to convert with later on down the road is that for every one liter, there are 1,000 milliliters. So that's an important one to know. Um, every once in a while, we'll have to go between milligrams, grams, and kilograms. There are 1,000 grams in one kilogram, and there are 1,000 milligrams for every one gram. To wrap up this section with our objectives, um, we need to be able to identify the measured quantity, something like mass, based on its reported unit, grams. Um, and we need to be able to convert between numbers um, that are reported in metric base units um, and with metric prefix units.